Uh, just to, to pick up on the, the last comments, um, what my day job is, I'm a research attorney with the Superior Court of Santa Barbara. And I have a chance to read everything that gets filed with the court. And anything whatsoever that would make the legal writing and research better is certainly going to be appreciated. Um, I know no one in this room <laughs> falls in that category, but, uh, but it may surprise you to learn that lawyers as a whole work very hard to do very little. Um, that they want to be able to, to get things done as quickly as possible and as efficiently as possible. And often it turns out that that is at the expense of what would be a more polished uh, approach. And, and so that situation is actually what led to the, this particular um, paper because the conversation that I had with, with Elsa, who is a recent graduate from the Vermont Law School, um, also waiting for her bar result exams, we all can think hideously about what that was like. Um, about what it is that, that things like AI can do. And, and one of the things that came up in the course of that conversation is the fact that things like ChatGPT, that's a, a large language model. You would think that a large language model would be good at language, right? Because it is ultimately a predictor of, of what's the next word in the sentence and go on and on. on. And so I thought it would be interesting to find a way of testing to see how competent that chat GPT would be at doing language. And it occurred to me that the best place to check on that would be in ambiguity. And of course, we have lots of places in the law where we have ambiguity, and that's what keeps us employed by and large. Um, contracts are a perfect place for that. And, and so I looked for a situation in which we could find a decision that dealt with ambiguous language in a contract. And, and I found one. And it involves, what does chicken mean? Famous case. And one thing that's nice about this particular case is that it is a problem of words more than it's a problem of law. Um, and it's the kind of a question that would be asked by both lawyers and by clients. So the case is from 1960, uh, um, for something like that, I haven't been able to figure out exactly how to pronounce it, uh, versus BNS International Sales Corporation. Famous case uh, decided by uh, Circuit Judge Friendly, very famous jurist. And so the question that came out of that case was from this particular contract. I took the words from the case as best I could. Um, because the contract was very simple, it was between a Swiss corporation and a New York corporation um, trying to sell chicken. And as you can see, this is the language that was used um, in the contract. It's particular chicken in certain weights, individually wrapped in cryovac, packed in secure cartons. And so the question was, does chicken in this context mean young chicken, suitable for broiling and frying? Or does it mean any kind of chicken that meets these contract specifications, including what is referred to as stewing chicken or fowl? And I asked ChatGPT to answer that question, because it seemed to me that that would be the kind of thing that we would want to learn. And what did we get? We got an answer, quickly, affirmatively. The answer, according to ChatGPT, is it refers to the young chicken suitable for broiling and frying. And then it explained. Now, you can look at this and realize that there are some problems. The first problem is that it's the wrong answer. Uh, <laughs> at least the wrong answer according to Judge Friendly. Um, in a rather elaborate, I don't know if anybody's ever read that particular case, it does pop up quite a lot. And it surprised me a little bit because they talk about ChatGPT only being worthwhile um, for information that is from 2021 and before, and it's not going to deal with very modern things. And 1960 doesn't strike me as something that's astonishingly modern, um, <clears throat> but its answer clearly doesn't reference even popular discussions of the Fregelmont case. And indeed, its analysis really is circular reasoning. It's going back and looking at the question, and then it's answering the question based upon how the words were in the question, not so much um, what it's getting from something else. So 
And the, the paper that's going to be published has got all this in excruciating detail. Um, but here's some comments. OK, so one thing that we learn about ChatGPT is that it gives a very confident answer. It says the answer is this. It does not tell us that what all lawyers do. Well, it depends. And you hedge and so on, right? It doesn't do any of that. It says, this is the answer. This is why the answer. That's the end of the story. It also doesn't ask any other questions. Now, it's possible to turn on through ChatGPT and through other uh, LLMs. It's possible to turn on uh, a mode in which you can inquire. It's also possible to use a higher version of this. But this is not. this experiment wasn't about how we could make ChatGPT give us the right answer. It was about what happens when we're going to use it in its simplest, most straightforward way. When we get this kind of an answer, we don't get answers that say what other information is available, right? It might have been in this contract that there were definitions of chicken, right? It might have been that the, the nature of the negotiations talked more about the type of chicken. And in fact, the case goes through all of that, that discussion. And ultimately, interestingly enough, Judge Friendly decides that he couldn't decide. He decided on a burden of proof issue. He said that the plaintiff um, <laughs> did not show that it was the narrower version. And therefore, it was perfectly acceptable as far as the legal case went to go with the broader version. So what do we get? We get the idea that simple questions, legal questions that are framed into ChatGPT um, without providing as much context as possible is likely to give us incomplete or incorrect answers. Now, regrettably, my experience with lawyers um, from the court and otherwise has been that lawyers always want to go the simple way first, right? It takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of thought to do something more. And yet, when you just put that in, you get bad things. Bad things that come out is very confident Confidently wrong. And, and one thing that I, is really something that I thought about a lot coming out of putting this experiment together is that it's not just lawyers who are going to be doing this. It's going to be lawyers who are going to deal with clients who are going to be putting this kind of information into chat GPT. Because as we all know, lawyers hate to pay, uh, clients hate to pay lawyers, right? You know, they're always there because they want to spend as little as possible on lawyers. And so your typical client is going to do a little bit of research on their own. And, and they're going to do something like put it in ChatGPT, ask them the question. Now, because the answers that they're going to get are going to be incomplete or incorrect, when everything blows up and they have to go to the lawyer, um, you're going to find the clients are going to have an expectation that is in part developed because of the interaction with, with ChatGPT. And indeed, we already see this kind of phenomenon existing in other areas of the economy. The thing that I, I thought of was Zillow. Um, before Zillow, you go to your real estate agent, and your agent is going to say, house is worth this much, um, this is overpriced, that sort of thing. Now people go on Zillow. Zillow gives them a number, absolute number, clear. And real estate agents hate that. They hate it because it doesn't include all of these extra facts and things, but the expectations of the client have been affected by the mere existence of the interaction with ChatGPT. And so therefore, one of the things that's going to be happening, I think, in the future is that you're going to find the need for lawyers to be able to bridge that gap and to deflate expectations where that needs to happen and to realize that the confidence that you get out of this kind of an experiment is not something that one can really have in the law. As we all know as lawyers, that there is nothing that is a nice, neat, easy answer. <coughs> Indeed, nobody would litigate if there was a nice, easy answer. And I'll just leave it right there. Thank you very much.